it's Kevin Mark by 24-7 and I hope you're all good. So Newcastle finish off a amazing week for the club. Newcastle United won very whingy, very time wasty, very <laughs> I'll I'll use whingy again, why why not? Arsenal nil. What a satisfying win that was. Seriously, what a satisfying win. Because Arsenal came to St James's last season off the back of them saying Newcastle did this, Newcastle did that, Newcastle did this. Time wasted and that, time wasted this. And the time wasted and time wasted and they strangled the fuck out of the game last year in 1-2-0. They tried it again and strangled the game and tried to play the crowd and tried to play the referee. And they got exactly what they deserved. Fuck all. Because what a bunch of whingy, cheating bastards. Honestly, I've never seen anything like it. Um, the amount that they roll about on the floor looking for free kicks. And then they'll boot you. Uh, uh, like, such a, such a horrible side to play against. That team is very Mikel Arteta. It's whingy, it's whiny, and it's a bit sad. Like, just... So entitled and spoiled, like the way they go on, and then the reaction, which I'll come on to in a minute. But fuck me, but it was a really close, contested half. Um, referee f missed so much. I mean, where do you start with that Havertz tackle? What the fuck? Like, me and Paul were at the opposite end of the ground, and I went, I, I says to Paul straight away, you both feet off the ground. He's oh he should be off the field, and I seen the referee pull the yellow card out, and I'm like, how, <laughs> how can you come to that? Like, how was that even if they? It was crazy to me, um, absolutely mental. Uh, I seen a couple with Bruno. In all fairness, I think Bruno has been lucky in recent weeks. I think he was lucky to stay on the field against West Ham. And he was lucky to stay on the field last night with uh, a push off the ball on Jorginho in particular. Um, the one, the one that he got a yellow card for, I disagree with though, because um, he he was running towards goal and he pushes pushes someone away from him to like because he's in front of the player. But yeah, I didn't didn't understand that. But in my opinion, Bruno was lucky to stay on the field as well, but. The referee got all sorts wrong. He was fucking terrible. Honestly, he was. He was awful. And then on to the, on to the goal. And Murphy, who was on for like, what was it? I think a 10-minute cameo. He put he plays the ball. Well, he tries to shoot. And obviously, now he, he, he nearly hits the corner flag. But it doesn't go out play. Joe Willer keeps it in. Literally that. And it's rare that where me and Paul sit probably had the best view of even the cameras and that like it's very rare comes comes about where that's the case but i even says to paul in real time as it was happening i said paul that is it it's he kept it in but it was close so close and when when gordon scored i knew they were going to look at whether it crossed the line or not but in my opinion it just hadn't like my eyes don't my eyes can't lie to us it, it, it didn't cross the fucking line it just didn't like and I, I, I obviously you're going to be like what you Newcastle fan watching of course you're going to say it wasn't over I swear to god <laughs> like I'd bet bet me life on anything like in real time and obviously being sports proved to be useful one time in a entire in an entire time of them being a thing Showing the technology of the ball not crossing the line. Uh, and it was really close, but obviously it, it, were, it fared, fared for us. The ball goes into the box. Joe Linton wins the header against Gabriel. Um, for me, Gabriel's already looking to go down. I've seen that back a couple of times. And then Gordon finishes and puts 1-0 up. And then it just becomes a defensive job. And that's exactly what it became. Like... Um, Arsenal really pushing for the for the equaliser, and we defended so resiliently. Matt Ritchie getting his two hundred and fiftieth game, the 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 renaissance of 
of Jamal Lascelles coming into the team and playing really well. Um, another clean sheet for him. I'm happy for him, to be fair, because obviously he was written off by a lot of people, me included. I didn't think he'd have a future at the club, but for me, I think he's earned or he's earning the right for a new contract, absolutely, because in my opinion, you're not going to get many fourth or fifth choice defenders who are one, happy to fill in when needed to do a job, happy to be a part of the squad, still a leader within the dressing room and stuff like that, and you're not going to find one who is going to do all that and be as good as Jamal Lascelles uh, to be fourth or fifth choice if they bring another centre-back in the summer. So, for me, give give Jamal a new contract because I think he deserves one, especially with his performances in recent weeks. He's been he's been tremendous. But, um, yeah, it ends 1-0. And it was a game with few chances, to be honest, on both sides. I thought we managed the game well. Um, Arsenal, the whinginess after the game, man, fucking hell. Like... It's just, just ridiculous the way they were going on. You'd think like I seen I seen a video of uh, Bruno's highlights and it's got like Halloween music on in the background and that and I'm like Halloween Halloween was last week, mate, and like you kinda of tell me that like out of all the famous characters of Halloween you've got Michael Myers, you've got you've got Freddie and Jason, oh and now you've got Bruno uh kicking people about wait I it's a load of shit, like <laughs> but it was so satisfying, and obviously you see, you see Arteta going on one. Um, fucking, it's a disgrace. It's this. I feel physically sick. But when his team got a decision the other week, it was um, oh the referees make mistakes, you know. Oh, it, it it's just he's a manager that does mean that. Way. Like I just can't, I just can't deal with him. But yeah, it's a it's a crack and win for Newcastle against a top top team. Arsenal as a football team are fantastic and are one of the better teams in the league, hundred percent. But they're a bunch of whiny bastards. Fuck me, like fans, manager. I've I've seen it all. It's mental, and just to see them melt down like they have, I don't think anybody gets under the skin quite as much with Arsenal as Eddie House Newcastle, because he kicked, or kicked off at the nil nil. <sighs> He had a lot to say in the press conference before the 1-2 in the last season and he had a meltdown again um, at St James's and then a couple of seasons ago as well when we beat them uh, 2-0 to stop them getting in the Champions League. So, yeah, um, we really get on his nerves and I, I love it, me. I don't like him at all. Um, but one thing I do want to address is that I've seen news uh, on Instagram on the Instagram stories of, of, of Joe Willock and, and Bruno of them getting racially abused after the game. It's fucking bang out of order, man. Like, racism doesn't belong in or out of football. It just, it just not needed, man. Like, you could tell by the, like, Joe Willock's story, he's upset because at the end of the day, he's an Arsenal lad. He grew up playing for Arsenal. And to be subject to that is just... It's just mental, and I don't know why it's still a thing in football. Like, I get it. Like when you're passionate and you're and your emotions are high. I I was my emotions were high yesterday. I'm sure a lot of fans were with the way the referee was and the the way the Arsenal players conduct themselves on the pitch. But never ever is it a, is it ever right to be to go as low as racist uh, being racist. It's fucking mental that it's still a thing. In 2023, but that's just something I wanted to get off my chest because I think it's just fucking mental that it's that it's happening. Um, crazy, but we'll move on uh, to the next game. Obviously, uh, Dortmund on the Tuesday night. Can't wait for that. Uh, but we'll end the week on a on a high. Beat Manchester United at Old Trafford for the first time in ten years. Uh, sorry, yeah, t ten years. That's right. And then. Obviously, end of the week on beating Mikel Arteta's whingy Arsenal side at the end of the week as well. So, we take it. We've played all the top sides, um, Bar and Tottenham, in the first 10-11 games. And we'll find ourselves in the top six. So, I w just, we had the much harder start of a lot of teams in the league. In fact, all of them. And we've managed to sustain a level of winning and stuff like that as well. So, happy days. Uh, hopefully it's something we can maintain, but 
yeah, get your comments in. Let us know how you feel. Who was your man of the match? I think for me, it's got to be... Um, I'll give it to Gordon because he scored the winner. And it was a very tight game. Uh, very minimal margins. And, yeah. Get your comments in. Let us know. And uh, catch us on the next one, everyone. Catch us later. Ta-da for now. <laughs>